JavaScript is pretty much everywhere. And everywhere that it is, it is being run as an interpreted language. So you'll have JavaScript in the browser, and then you'll have a JavaScript engine, and it takes the text, you know, the JavaScript code, and it interprets it on the fly and runs it in the browser to do what you need it to do. Similarly, in Node, it has a similar thing with V8 as the JavaScript engine. And React Native has both JavaScript core and Hermes, which we're gonna be talking about in a little bit, which are JavaScript engines that, again, interpret JavaScript code and run it in the engine. What if you could compile your JavaScript to binary native code and run it right where it was without having to deal with any sort of interpreter or JavaScript engine? That's where static Hermes comes in. This was announced by Tsvetan from Meta at React Native EU in 2023. I was lucky enough to be there and participate in that conference, which was really great. And when I heard Svetan talking about Static Hermes, I knew I needed to get my hands on it. What Static Hermes does is it takes Hermes, which is a JavaScript engine, and it turns it into a compiler. So it will allow you to take JavaScript code or TypeScript code or, or Flow, if you want to use that. Remember, this is a meta product, so they're going to use Flow. And it allows you to compile it to native binary code and, and introduce ahead of time optimizations based on the types that you're giving it. So if you're just compiling JavaScript with no flow or no TypeScript, then you're not going to get a lot of optimizations because, you know, JavaScript's hard to optimize. That's why interpreters are not as fast as native code. If you give it types, then it gets really fast. If you want to know more about how Static Hermes works, you really should go watch Svetin's talk at React Native EU. I'll try to link to that in the description here. What we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to actually try to run Static Hermes on my machine and compile some JavaScript into a native binary and run it. And we'll just play around with it. This is sort of bleeding edge stuff. I mean, Static Hermes is really not ready to go. Uh, when I asked Svetin about this, uh, he said, prepare to be disappointed. Uh, terrible uh, accent. I'm really sorry, Svetin. But he was he was like, this is not ready to go, but you can play with it and let me know if there's anything you know that goes wrong. I've already downloaded a copy of Hermes uh, by Git cloning it here. So let's go take a look. When you think of static Hermes, just think of like the next iteration of Hermes. It's Hermes which you can interpret, but it's also statically compiled Hermes as well. So it allows you to do both. I'm not gonna spend really any time looking through the Hermes uh, source code. Maybe we could do that at some later date, but I just wanted to show you that this is just what you would download from GitHub. So let's back out of there. And what I've done is I've built Hermes in two different places, build and build release. Build release is like, the, uh, the tighter, more optimized release mode versus build is the debug mode. So let's try running it first. If I jump into build, you'll see that we have a bin directory right here. So let's jump into that. Uh, not bun, we're not doing bun this time. And if I look in bin, there's a bunch of different binaries here, but there's Hermes and then there's also Shermes, which is static Hermes. So let's run Shermes, <laughs> and there it is. It's 0.0, .0 and let's try running dash dash help. And you can see there are a bunch of uh, compiler uh, flags that you can provide like optimization levels and, and whatnot. If you're used to things like Clang or Clang or any of those, this will look fairly familiar. You'll also notice here that it can parse flow and TypeScript and JSX right on its own without having to deal with any sort of transpiler, which is really nice. I also have this sandbox folder and in this folder, you can see I'm already in it in this VS code instance that I have up here. I have a C++ file and I have a hello.js. There's nothing in the hello.js, just a, a comment. And then the C++ file has a little just hello world here. And the reason I did the C++ is because I wanted to show you, it, C++ is not needed for Hermes. In fact, it, it replaces C++. It allows you to write JavaScript or TypeScript Let's actually compile a little binary with C++. So use G++ world dot CPP and then dash O, which is like the output. We're just gonna output it to world. And now a new binary file shows up. You can see it's binary. It is about 40K. And if I run that, 
it outputs hello from C++. So let's try to do the same thing, but with hello.js and static Hermes. So static Hermes does not have console.log. If we try to do this, it will not work. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. What it does have is a print command. And if I say hello from static Hermes, what we need to do is this command, which is a little bit funky, but you can see that the dash O is similar. It outputs to hello and we are compiling hello.js. So let's try running that. And now there's a hello. So let's do hello. And there we go. Hello from static Hermes. And you can see that it's a fairly similar size, you know, 40K for the C++ and 51K for the hello from static Hermes. Pretty similar. But we just ran JavaScript code in binary. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Now I mentioned that you can't just do console.log. In fact, in fact, if I try, let's try console.log, try building again, it says console was not declared in anonymous function. Hopefully these error messages get a little bit better. So we don't have access to console. So you might be asking, well, what, what good is this? It's not like node where I can just access everything I need to, to, to build. Keep in mind that for the most part, this is going to be used to replace C++ situations. So if you were normally gonna write something in C++, that's where you would use this. And it's not gonna come with the same standard library that a lot of these other runtimes might have like Node or Bun or uh, even living in a browser. Now, I'm hopeful that at some point we will have, you know, connections for all of these things because I would love to be able to write full on code here uh, using static Hermes, just compiling right to native. But again, this is really, it's designed for React Native. That's its primary use case. And those things are actually really, they're defined by React Native rather than by Hermes. What can we do with static Hermes? Well, not a lot yet, but we can rename this to TS. So let's try that, hello.ts. And now that it's a TypeScript file, let's try extracting the keys, object.keys, from the global this object, which does exist. And then we're going to go keys.foreach, and we're gonna do print key, and then we simply need to recompile down here, and it did not find JS because I renamed it, so TypeScript, and then let's run hello. And all it found was a promise, interesting. That's because we really need to do own get own property names. That's actually a better option right here. And let's try recompiling and rerunning. And now we actually have a bunch of different property names. So you can't just do keys, that won't work with global this. So this is kind of interesting. You can see things like error and infinity and parse int, parse float. You don't see console here. Set, map, weak map, all of these things. There's print. There's also eval, which is kind of interesting. We should, let's try that. Let's try that. In eval. And we got our first segmentation fault. Hey, how about that? <laughs> so eval didn't work very well. There's an interesting Hermes internal. Let's let's see if we can get what's in Hermes internal and see what's in that. Compile that and then run hello. And Hermes internal has concat, has promise, and queue job, get function location. These are kind of interesting. This is not documented. A lot most of this stuff is not documented right now. This is stuff that I would probably wait on Sveten to release more information about and uh, the rest of the Static Hermes team there at Meta. Let's try a few other things. So let's try doing const today equals new date. And actually I wanna see if we can do string interpolation here. All right, let's see what happens. Today's date is Monday, November 6th, which is actually true as of today. So it did seem to get it. And in fact, if I then run it again, it did change. So it is pulling that date in right now, which is cool. You'll notice that there's a TypeScript error here, expected zero arguments, but got one. That's because the print signature, which TypeScript expects, is not the same as what Hermes expects. So if I go up here and try to get rid of that, declare function, it appears to work, but if I were to try to compile it, it doesn't 
seem to like that invalid statement encountered. So doesn't like that. I'm not sure how to fix this yet. This is again, still pretty new stuff. Now, if you try to send this hello to someone else, it's not going to work because if I cat this, I'm actually going to expand the screen and then cat hello. You'll notice that it hard codes my path in uh, to the binary to the library. And this is basically where it picks up on Hermes and all of Hermes' functionality. So if I were to want to compile this without having that dependency and be able to send it to someone else, what I pass in is the static link and deal with the TypeScript error. And then now if we do an L, you'll see that it's actually quite a bit bigger. It's 22 megabytes rather than like 51K. So it actually brought pretty much all of Hermes into the binary and it's ready to go. But this is not interpreted. Again, this is like bringing in Hermes and adding on almost like a plugin, which is your app. It's like you, it's like binary that actually runs right there. It's not, it's not trying to interpret. So it is quite a bit bigger, but you can at least distribute it anywhere you want to go. My assumption is that this is going to get much smaller as time goes on and more optimizations are, are included in this. So that's pretty much all I had for static Hermes today. Uh, I'm hopeful that I'll have a lot more for you folks in the future because I'm really excited about what static Hermes can do. But really where static Hermes is designed to run is in a React Native app in a mobile app. So you can run it in an Android or an iOS app and it will take the place of where you might write native code, uh, maybe in C++ or something else like that. It allows you to write TypeScript or Flow and just compile that right into your app. The downside, of course, is that you can't do over-the-air updates. And there are some other uh, kind of limitations as well. Huge kudos to Svetin's team over there at Meta who has put this together. I I'm, I'm, couldn't be more excited. Anyway, that's enough nerding out for today. I'm Jamin, and please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. I know I haven't been, been putting out a lot of content lately, but I hope to do stuff that's kind of interesting and gets you a little bit further along your journey here with React Native and other cool tech that I like to nerd out about. And I'll see you all next time.